Good morning, everybody, and thank you. It's great to see so many people that came back to the second meeting. I'm um, just going to give a brief situational update. I spoke at length uh, at the last meeting, I think covering a lot of ground as to where we have arrived to. Um, if there's one thing I want to message here, it's that I hope that this is the group of people, because we've seen now that this story has more or less left the headlines. We're not going to see it. We're not seeing it on the news. We've moved on to other issues. and. I hope that this is the group of people that will understand that this is not over. That this is, the crisis may be abated, but this issue is going to sustain. And it, it has been with us for a long time. Through this crisis, many people have now become aware of the fact that it is here and it's present with us. And so I, I'm really hoping that we can keep the steam in the engine here in this room because we're going to face several challenges ahead. First, we have a large number, potentially 100 to 200 right now children who are in our community who have been released from these facilities and who are now going to be faced with navigating the legal system, but also school systems, society, social life, just general integration. We've also got children who continue to be detained in the custody of the shelters that we've always had, even though Lackland is now empty, there are 1,100 beds for children in the San Antonio district. Now that includes Corpus Christi, that also includes Austin very soon, potentially. And so we're preparing for more permanent shelters to arrive to our area for increase in capacity. And, and this is going to mean that although it's hard, as we found out over the summer, to get into the shelters, children are going to continue to be released from these shelters into our community. The third group that we also need to be watching out for are the children who are here in foster care. So there are, there are 75 beds of long-term foster care here in San Antonio. This is a permanent population of children who are in our communities, who are going to school. They're going to John Jay, mainly high school. So it was very good to see members of the, of the school district out. And, uh, and so we need to be a support for these children. And then finally, we do expect we do know that there will be another issue similar to what we experienced this past summer. At the moment, we're seeing a dip in numbers, but that is mainly due to several choke points that have been created along the travel route. Either the, the human wall of special forces in Honduras, the Mexican police who are rounding children up and bringing them to detention centers in southern Mexico, or just the border enforcement that's now going along our U.S.-Mexico border. There will be breaks in this, and we will see, we will see flights of children who will arrive again uh, between now and the end of this year, and then we can expect that next summer will be 1.5 times the magnitude of what we experienced this summer. There was recently a meeting that was convened by the Office of Refugee Resettlement and the director for ORR, Eskinder Nagash, he publicized that the final analysis for fiscal year 2014, which is the year that began in October and that will finish here at the end of September, that 64,000 unaccompanied minors will have passed through the Health and Human Service shelter system. The projected number is 96,000 for fiscal year 2015, and that'll be beginning in October. So we do need to maintain situational awareness. We need to maintain response readiness if there is a flare up in numbers again, all the while maintaining a vigilance and a consistent presence for those children who are here in our community and for our community members also who I think need to learn more, need to be educated more about this issue. We're hearing reports from, very ma from many municipalities surrounding San Antonio that are passing ordinances and declarations and decrees against immigrants and against immigrant children. And these are people who des desperately need our communion and need to, to be in conversation with us on this topic. So I really look forward to continuing to work with you all. Um, I, I'm here and available to answer any questions that anybody has that I might be able to answer. Um, and I look forward to breaking up into the small groups and, and taking this to a more active, uh, uh, an active uh, uh, phase. So at that, I will pass the mic to Kelly. Pastor Kelly Allen. 